Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things. Today, we're going to talk about White Wolf, the White Wolf role-playing series of books. Uh, this, if you're not familiar, this is like a sort of occult pen and paper role-playing thing. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool when I was young, when I was in high school. Um, Never had a game that panned out well with this series, though. It's sort of an interesting thing. Uh, what White Wolf does is they specialize kind of in... Uh, vampires are probably the most popular thing. If you're familiar with the video game Vampire the Masquerade, uh, it's about being a vampire, and the whole idea is that you're not supposed to reveal that you're a vampire because reasons, and uh, and you go around doing vampire things, helping the clan, being more important in the vampires, among the vampires, and the older you get, of course, the more powerful you are. There's a lot of lore behind all this stuff, and the lore is actually kind of fascinating. Uh, in fact, I like a lot of the, a lot of the lore in general behind the White Wolf stuff, but, uh, but like I said, I've never really had a very good game with them. I used to own a book called Demon, and, uh, and this was kind of a, a like I said, they all have interesting premises, but the premise behind the demon thing was that sometimes, you know, if people would kill themselves, then demons from hell would force their way out and they'd, they'd uh, latch onto this suicide victim's body and they would take it over. And, uh, and this was kind of like a parole, like not really a parole, but it was like a prison break, you know, they're like, oh, I'm out of hell for a little while. Like, and they would just be so happy to be out of hell that they really wouldn't want to do anything to get put back into hell. And there were other demons and so on and so forth. And of course, there were also the vampires out there. All the, all the lore is connected, I believe. Um, but, but the idea behind it was that you were supposed to play a demon that didn't want to be discovered. Because, because if a priest came along and did an exorcism, like if somebody, if somebody devoted to God came along and did an exorcism and got rid of you, then it was right back to hell and you were supposed to not want that. And, and so it created this kind of conflict where you had all these demonic powers, like there was a table and a list, but every time you used them, it kind of reminded you of your, of your, that you belonged in hell and it kind of pulled you further backwards into hell. It was, it was really like the more that you tried to use your powers, the more that you were likely to be you know, you would become more demonic, and then you'd get singled out as a demon, and then somebody would do an exorcism, and that would be it. So, it was, it was a good premise on paper, I thought, and some people actually get really into this. They get, I've, I've heard that some people get very, um, almost kind of, you could say, like, pretentious about it. Like, they really don't want to do an adventure with these kinds of role-playing games. They kind of want to just be like, I am the vampire. Or, you know, I am the demon, and so on and so forth. But if you followed along in any of the role-playing games that I've related in the past, uh, my role-playing group was never really very good at taking that sort of thing seriously. When we were like, alright, we're demons, guys, and we don't want people to find out that we're demons, so, you know, let's do our thing. Uh, the first game that I played, it was set, like, just before the apocalypse. And what I was gonna have the group do is they were going to do something to trigger the apocalypse, and it wound up kind of getting really derailed. Because the first thing that happened was everyone made their characters, and they invested all this stuff, and they took it to heart that the premise was that they wanted to be like normal humans, and they wanted to live normal lives and not go back to hell. Like, they were trying, some of them were trying to atone. Like, I remember I had one friend who was, like, trying to atone. So, like, he wouldn't go to church, because if he walked into a church, it would burn, and it was really painful. But he would sit at home, and he would watch, like, the television, you know, the televangelists, and just be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna repent today. And so he would, like, try to repent but he didn't want to like pray too loudly in case God heard him and then like made him go back to hell. So it was like one of those things, uh, just, uh, you know, praise to God. And so, yeah, he would just mumble. I mean, surely God knew. It was, it was kind of funny because I think the most, the best role playing that we did with that was we just had the characters sit around and discuss the philosophical impossibility that God would be omnipotent and that somehow God would not be aware that there was a group of demons just hanging around on earth even though they were explicitly supposed to be imprisoned in hell. It was like, you know he knows, right? You know he knows. And be like, yeah, I know he knows. He's Clearly, clearly this is not going to work out. So our role playing group kind of... Uh, we didn't get into the adventure aspect of things because everybody was focused a little bit too well on the whole I am an average Joe who is also a paranoid demon thing. And uh, and I believe that I eventually, I was GMing it and this was one of the first games, one of the earlier games that I'd ever GMed. I'd never, I'd never tried to run a game before uh, that was so, that, that was quite like that. Like I say, some people, they really get into the, into the kind of the pomp of it. You know, just like, I am a demon, and they want to do things like they have, like they, you know, they'll want to like, get in scuffles with mortals, and then like abuse the mortals, and just be like, oh, pa, pa. But we never really, 
Like when we abused people, we did it because it was it was amusing to be sadistic, not so much because it was a, a power thing. Like we really didn't we really didn't ever play the games to feel powerful. So the trick with with having a game where abusing your power has considerable drawbacks. Uh, we really didn't abuse the power, like, like killing people even reminded you that you were redeeming. Like, like if you did something wrong, if you committed sins, it reminded you that you were a demon, as far as I recall. Or at least this is how we played it. So, so we, like I said, we just wound up going, like, we wound up going to office work and stuff like that, and talking around the cooler about God and religion, and, like, people would be, like, like, we would, we would be, like, really just helpful demons, like, people would do things, and be, like, we'd have, like, a co-worker come along, and this is, my, this is what everybody wanted to roleplay, like, we'd have a co-worker come along, and be, like, you know, I'm thinking about cheating on my wife, and then everybody would be, like, no, 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 like, the whole party would be, like, don't, don't do that, don't do that, they were all just, like, roleplaying demons that got out of hell, don't do that, oh, man, you would not believe, man, I would never cheat on your wife, what I, what I would do, at least seek an annulment, sit down and talk to her, work it out, go through ca counseling, like, trying to just give all kinds of really good advice. Uh, eventually what wound up happening was I think that I had to stage something. This was kind of like when the when you get the paladin falling thing where uh, in Dungeons and Dragons there's a rule with paladins where if a paladin does something that upsets their god, they lose their powers. And so some really dickish GMs what they'll do is they'll sit down and they'll they'll like create an unwinnable situation where it's like you have to choose to sacrifice one person or another person and there's no right answer no matter what they do they will fall and then they'll lose all their god powers. Um, it's considered a really dick move but the game was going along so sluggishly I don't know how many sessions we had where we role played just being in the office uh, like chatting with our co-workers and it was it was becoming apparent that we were probably gonna just like can the game and move on so I thought to myself well maybe we'll try a paladin falls thing and so I set up something, I can't remember what, that caused uh, one of the players, it forced somebody to kill somebody. And, uh, and this got them on the run, so they had, to, like, they had to start moving. And I can't remember how everybody got roped into being responsible for this. But they all packed up their things and they had to run. Because something about it, so, like the self-defense that they did, I believe that they had to reveal their demonic powers. And so there was a demon hunter that was chasing them. He was trying to exercise them and send them back to hell. And so they're all just, they're all just trying to avoid going back to hell. They wanted to restart their new lives somewhere else. And I kept trying to sort of usher them towards the apocalypse. But, uh, but really, they just didn't want to do the apocalypse thing. They just kept avoiding it. I'd be like, oh, you know, this, like, you should go and meet with this guy. And they'd be like, oh, why? And he'd be like, well, he knows all about demons, and he's gathering together kind of a cult. And, you know, and they'd be like, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go back to hell. Why would I want to be part of a cult? And they're like, well, it's, you know, like, I had other demons that would come in, and they were trying to negotiate with him. And I would, I would be like, well, you know, you want to go join the cult because, uh, you know, as, as demons, I mean, these mortal lives are really short. It's only going to be like, what, another 40 years that you'll be alive? But, you, you know, everything's eternal. You need to go get with this cult and, and help usher in the apocalypse. And they'd be like, no, 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 you don't understand. Hell is an eternity one way or you li Like, but this is 40 years. Only 40 years. It was like a, it was like telling a beggar. Like, they, they had in their mind, it was like telling a beggar, you know, like, it's just a loaf of bread or whatever. You're like, are you kidding? It's a whole loaf of bread. Oh, my God, I haven't seen this much food in months. Like, so it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Too, too nice of people, too grounded of people, not very good players for a demon game. Um, it wound up being sort of fun, but it just it, eventually that was one of the games that, that ended without actually going anywhere. I've had a couple of those, I can't remember all of them, because some of them just dead-ended so, so supremely that it got weird. But I remember though, the White Wolf video games, a lot of those actually turned out much better than any of the role-playing games that I, I, I tried to get into. I never have had a good White Wolf role-playing game. And to this day, I don't know if I could actually get into one and have a good time. Because I still think, like, of the groups that I play with, if I ever got in a group that took White Wolf games, like, really seriously, and were like, yes, vampires, you know, we're super serious about this vampire thing, um, I would show up and just be, like, I would be that, I would be that jackass that plays the Nosferatu or something like that. But then, but then I'd be, like, a really, like, just a really uh, obnoxious Nosferatu, like, come on, guys, I want to go to the parade, I want to see the parade. And they'd be like, you can't, you're a Nosferatu. And I'd be like, I don't want to go. I would just be terrible. Um, Nosferatu are like the ugliest vampires in the world. They're supposed to, like, they're supposed to stay hidden in the sewers because if people see a Nosferatu, then everyone knows that there's such a thing as vampires. And this is bad because then people will come and they will put holy water on the vampires and they will die. Or they will sizzle. I don't know. This... Yeah, I didn't really. I never really played the vampire ones. Um, I didn't play. I didn't play Vampire: The Masquerade. But there was a series of game called uh, Hunter: The Reckoning, that that released for PS2. And this was actually a genre of game. It's like a top-down 
isometric shooter, kinda? And this was a strange one because this was actually it was very popular for a little while, or at least it was popular with one of my friends. Um, there was a couple games that came out like this. What another one was like the X Men games. There was a couple X Men games that was sort of like a type top down isometric thing, but instead you played as the X Men, and you would do things like you could have uh, Cyclops shoot his laser beams at people, and every time you leveled up, it was like a leveling thing. It was sort of an RPG deal. So like in the X-Men one, you'd level up and then Cyclops' eye lasers would get stronger. Or, uh, or this happened actually, we played Baldur's Gate uh, Dark Alliance, I think is what it was. And, and Dark Alliance was actually one that really cracked me up. My friend and I really loved to play this one. And, and actually Dark Alliance is probably what even got us into this gender, uh, uh, genre, 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 uh, gender. This genre in the first place was, uh, was Dark Alliance was really amusing because the starting clothes that they gave you didn't have any armor value. So what my friend and I like to do is that we would, we would start up the game and then we would just take off all our clothes. And then we would put on like gloves, helmet, boots. And then because you could, you could jump in the game, like we would just jump everywhere that we went. We declared ourselves the Flying Zucchini Brothers. We were, we were superheroes and so, forth, so on and so forth. But what you could do in that game is you could get to the end and then you could start over and you could, you could play the game through again, but with all the updated stats. And this became kind of a staple of that genre. You saw that in a lot of them where you'd play to the end and then you get to keep all your stats and skills and everything else. So what we used to do with Baldur's Gate was we would get to the end, we'd get all the best items, we'd get all the best spells, and then we'd restart, we'd get naked, and play through the whole game naked. And if we couldn't get through the whole game naked, we would restart and then play through the whole game again until we could get through the entire thing naked. So, Dark Alliance, that was how we did. It just got sillier and sillier, Dark Alliance did. Because we kept running into, like, you'd have these bosses and the game would try to set this sort of dramat, like this, this drama, this dramatic feel for everything. Like, there was one point where you had to fight this army of goblins or something like that, or kobolds, maybe? And uh, and I remember, like, I played as the archer and my friend played as the dwarf. You could play as, like, a sexy elven mage, but my friend hated it. I, like, I would be the only one who would play as the sexy elven mage, but only because I really didn't like the bow and arrow thing. And my friend would not play anything but the dwarf. He was like, no, I am the dwarf, I'm playing as the dwarf. So, I tried... I tried the archer and then I tried the sexy elven mage. And the sexy elven mage wasn't fun to, to have jump around in her underwear, so eventually I gave up on that. But the sexy elven mage also got the meteor spell. And about midway through the game, it was so overpowered because it had this massive radius and it killed everything. But anyway though, so... Yeah, so you used to, used to run into like boss rooms and there'd be like a goblin army. And what it would do is it would play this like dramatic reverb as the battle was starting to kind of imply like, oh no, da 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 you know, like the, the bad guys are coming. But what was funny was that when you leveled up enough, like you could walk into a room and then instantly clear it with just a few volleys of arrows. So I remember my friends getting into that room once and, uh, and like they were like, they were like, here it comes and before the dramatic reverb came, I just cleared the room, so all the goblins were just like, dead in a pile. Like, they were just strewn out, nothing survived. And so we ran in there, and it played the dramatic reverb. And it made us seem like the bad guys, because we just run into like a... Like, look at all these corpses, it was the slaughter. Like, the goblins didn't have a chance. We wiped them out. <laughs> that was just like dramatic reverb. Da, 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 da. It was us. We were the villains. We were the evil people. <laughs> but nothing, nothing was, nothing was worse than running in on the evil big bads and nothing but our underwear, and then slapping them with the obsidian sword until they just fell over, and it would take like, it would take like three seconds, because we get the dramatic speech like, oh, you heroes are so in for it now. Here, we, I'm gonna throw fireballs at you. <laughs> oh shit! This is the worst. This is the worst day ever. So. Yes, a game like that was Hunter the Reckoning. This was a White Wolf game. And and it was actually a really interesting one because the premise behind it was that uh, I, I guess the town was being kind of taken over by zombies. This is a little bit weird because Hunter, I think that Hunter, in the Hunter games, there's like, there's demons and there's vampires and there's monsters and things like that. But I don't believe that they're supposed to be as prolific as they are in the actual game. Like in the game, it makes it look like the, the monsters have pretty much run, they run the whole city. But, you know, it was just because it was an isometric sheet. Like you had to do something. You had to be killing somebody, something. So, every, you know, everywhere you went, there was just like zombies and monsters all over the place. And, uh, and what you were trying to do is you were trying to get to this insane asylum where, this witch is, where these witches were living, and these witches were sacrificing people so that they could summon their, their god, so that the god could destroy the earth. So, 
it was it was kind of a I remember there was a lot of secrets and there was a lot of things and I had that same deal where you could sort of replay and if you replayed the game you got bonuses like I think you got to play as uh, people that there was like a guy that got sacrificed and you got to play as him if you wanted to replay the game or there was also a, a bad guy who ran around and he was like a, a a zombie or a demon or something like that and you got to play as him. Uh, but what was interesting really was more the atmosphere of the game, and this is the thing that's always neat about White Wolf. Again, just just the atmosphere. I don't know if it's always, it doesn't. I don't know if it always comes over well. But the atmosphere for White Wolf games is always kind of kind of interesting. The the atmosphere and the present, uh, because because they just create so much backstory behind everything. There's all this stuff that's kind of going on, and this game had that too, where you go to this insane asylum. And some of the just these horrible creatures, like, you would play the game, and there was actually a max, there was a cap on how strong you could get, and it didn't take very long to get to that cap. Because I remember that we would, like, arrive at the max level, and we would still be just getting destroyed by some of the strongest creatures in the game. Like, we, we would have a really hard time just tanking our way through these things. Like, there was, this, there was a part where the game was like, you can go on to the next level, or you can try this special bonus level, which will be even harder. And we actually skipped the bonus level. You don't do this in games very often, but I remember the first time we were like, let's just try to beat the game. Like, forget the bonus level. Because it got to be that hard. Because it was like, well, can we level up anymore? And it was like, no. And it was like, well, so we're just going to get buried alive. And, and I think that the other thing that the game did was it, it, it paid attention to how much ammo you had. And so if you were losing a lot of ammo, then you would be screwed like when you moved on to the next level because you would have no supplies or anything like that. And I believe at this point of the game, there was no way to go backwards to collect ammo from any kind of like previous location or anything like that. So it had a way of kind of almost forcing you to want to progress and not deviate because if you deviated and you did a poor job, it would put you, you'd be in a much worse situation than if you just moved forward. So. I don't know, it was, it was an interesting game. I don't know a whole lot of what to say about it, except for just that the, the witches were like gigantic thigh-high boots, and that was kind of amusing. And uh, and the demon, the poor demon that they summon, suffers the same thing from... Like, the, it's it's got classic big, big bad guy syndrome, where it shows up and is like, I'm the single most powerful thing the world has ever seen, and I am so going to devour everyone and everything. And before he gets a play, before he gets a chance to do anything, the heroes show up and then smack him in the face and send him back to hell. One of those, one of those probably just like very humiliating. He goes back to hell and all the other demons just snigger and make fun of him. Just like, what did you do? How did that happen? You were there for like five minutes, Frank. Five minutes. I'm like, I can't help it. They summoned me right on top of these guys with the guns and they shot me with the guns and that just, just shut up. So, poor Frank the demon. But, yes. Um... I don't know, but, but that's that's uh, my experience with White Wolf games. I'm a little sad. I used to have I used to have a, a book, a resource book on the whole demon thing, but uh, this was one of many role-playing books that I owned. That uh, when I went to college, I left the books behind at my house, my parents' house. That is, I left it behind at my parents' house, and so they took all the books and they moved them down to the basement so they could make room. And then of course the basement flooded, so I lost them all. So I can't even really double check on the on the demon stuff. I kind of I kind of am curious about it. I would like to see if I remember it well or if now that I'm older I mean I was a teenager at the time I should have been able to understand it when I read it but it's been so long now it's been like a decade uh, since I tried to play the game looking back on it I I, uh, I can only remember I can only remember wisps of what what might have been if I still had the thing I could actually maybe look it up and say like oh this looks kind of cool we could call the guys up and be like do you want to do another Sunday thing that would be fun um, but eh, I don't have the system anymore. In fact, I think I, I lost a lot of books that way. I believe I even lost the Children of the Sun book that way, which is really sad. Um, but I'm not sure. I've got I've got a couple of them. But you know, but unlike Children of the Sun, they still make the they still make White Wolf. White Wolf is successful, I believe. Um, yeah. But anyway, though, I suppose that's it. We're a little bit short today, but I suppose that's it for today. So uh, you guys have a good day.